Tommy Doyle, any chance of playing against Wrexham? No, probably not. Probably not. Like, so we know, anyone who, with any doubts will probably not feature in this game. Chance for the weekend though, or is it going to be a little bit longer? Yeah, he's thing? been out running today, running on the grass with George, so it's not, and like I say, he played last week, so it's not a case of any fitness or injury issues in terms of coming back and uh, anything reoccurring, it's just a case of him being over this little calf issue he's got. So, yeah, if he misses tomorrow, which I'm expecting him to, um, he'll certainly be doing something tomorrow, which will get him closer to being involved at the weekend. Could this be an opportunity to get Kieran Clark some minutes, or is he not quite there yet? Again, possibly, possibly. So he, he's only trained uh, not not many minutes. If it is, you know what I mean. He's trained the back end of last week. We came back here after the game and uh, did a training session Saturday for people like Kieran and, and everyone. So everyone's on the same uh, the same place today. Um, so he's had three training sessions then then today. So yeah. He, if we get the chance to get him some minutes, we'll do it. Um, but like I say, it won't be uh, it won't be um, 90 minutes, things like that. That like just before we should be risking more than we we potentially gain. Is there anyone else that's back in training <coughs> yet of the others that are kind of shorter to medium term? Uh, Flecky has been training, so he's he's another one. And then like I said, you, your next ones uh, on the grass. We've got uh, George and Tommy today. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of the approach to the Wrexham game, can we kind of expect a, a similar line-up where maybe maybe a bit of rotation, but essentially still a, a strong team? Yeah, every team we've put out this season has been strong. We, we, we've got to rotate because we've got uh, Saturday, midweek, Saturday, midweek, Saturday, you know. Um, but there's not too many we can do in terms of personnel. Um, if, because we've got one or two of the younger boys missing as well, obviously Jebo suspended, Will injured, they'd have probably featured. Um, Sai's carrying something so we're not going to risk anything with, with Sai, Blaster's being ill, he's coming back. So, um, yeah, it's going to be from the group, the same group. Reflecting on last weekend, what can you kind of do a little bit differently to maybe have a little bit more cutting edge at the end, turn that possession into chances? I know that was one of the, the things that you'd talked Nothing about. Nothing other than make better decisions and have more quality at the top end. We, um, yeah, watching the game back, it, it, we're very good to that point and the amount of 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 or getting beyond their line. Um, <coughs> then three things, either poor decision, um, not good enough quality or the instances where it was it just didn't fall our way and it, and it was one of them games so yeah but it's a good point for us gets us close to where we want to be um, yeah and were, like I said there are lots of positives from that Do you think ever since the World Cup break that the team hasn't quite reached the same heights as it did before? No I keep hearing this how can you go so long and be I, honestly I keep hearing this and yeah it winds me up it makes me laugh I, I, I get it to a certain degree but yeah, not not at all. Listen, results will always dictate. So, so lots of times, yeah, great performance. We've won one nil. You'd always take it. We have. We've shown strength. We've shown. On Saturday, we show we were very composed with the ball. We were excellent without the ball. Gave one chance away where we left the runner. Limited a team again who make of lots of attempts generally to nothing. Um, and we know what we got wrong, which was that final bit at, at the top end of the pitch. Uh, then we've had other games where we've maybe been brilliant for 60 minutes, only scored one goal, could have had dozens, and then seen the game out, again defended very well, but they have more possession and you get criticised. So honestly, it comes with the territory, it's what football is, but uh, we focus on what we know we're doing right, what, what we want to be better at in each game, to always look for that perfect performance. Um, so we know that, we get that, but yeah, he, no. We watch the games, we watch every, virtually every championship game, um, and I know what the boys are doing really well, and I know when, when we need to be better and what generally we'd need to be better at. Is that perception then a, potentially a sign of A, where you are in the division and the kind of expectation that, that goes with it? Yeah, probably, but that's a dangerous thing. So we know how hard we've had to work to get there, we know things that we're dealing with, and despite that, handling it and, and doing the business and getting the results so again but again we we get that we know that 
Um, and we also know how tough it is for teams to get wins and points and be consistent in this league because, like I said, it's not just this season, but go back any season, it's so hard to be consistent in this league. Um, and that's been, you know, one of our strengths, you'd say, this season. Do you expect Wrexham to do anything greatly differently now that they're the, the away team coming into the replay? Not really. We could come and attack us and have a free hit, similar to what they did at Coventry, similar to what they did to us at home. Um, yeah, and, and it's different for them. They get the same, you've just mentioned us, where we are in the league. Say Rotherham's approach against us at the weekend. Wrexham find that in their league games, where they're maybe seen as a, a scalp and teams are up in the game for them. and. So it's a it's, it's different different feel for them in 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 these games, um, but that makes them dangerous. So we have to respect that, like I said, and, and approach it in the right way. What impressed you about Wrexham and, and what they did in that first game? Uh, well, all everything impressed me, but nothing surprised me because I've seen enough of them, um, know enough of the players. Um, yeah, so nothing they're doing at the minute, whether that's the league form, the cup run. Nothing they're doing is, is surprising me. Um, they've got good players, um, and, and you know they're in a, they can attract good players. They can pay for good players. You, you can see that when they got their their injuries against us at the back, and then they they gone sign O'Connell from Charlton, who was arguably Rochdale's best player last season. Lets his contract run down, gets his move to League One. But Wrexham can can attract players like that because of you know the manager, of the club, the backing. Um, and the status at the minute, so we know how dangerous they are, and we know, um, yeah, we know what good side they are. Oli McBurney kind of indicated that the kind of the story and the press and everything else around that first game had, had frustrated a little, and kind of looked at it from from that perspective. Mm. For you going into this one, is it a case of you know we want to get on top of it early and just kind of quash that story before it even kicks off? The story there, that's why everyone's turning up again. <laughs> that's. Uh, yeah, cameras, radio, Disney, the documentary. But that's what their journey is, you know. And, and that's, listen. Yeah, do I, it drives me on that type of thing. I want to beat them because that 100 percent, 100 percent. But it don't mean it changes our approach or their approach. And you know what? When I came out of the game down at the race course and we we'll, had five minutes with some of their fans, and. Uh, they're on an unbelievable journey and, and everything that's happening is so good for them, it's so good for the, for the National League, for football in general. Um, and, and you only have to see that, like you look at, we spoke about it afterwards as a group, obviously the class of 92 and Salford's story is a big one for us football people, you know some of them, that type of thing, and it's huge. But when you get in uh, the A-listers and the, uh, the ownership of Wrexham now and that worldwide appeal, it's unreal, so it can only be a positive. So. Yeah, from that uh, from that side of things, it's it's a really really good thing. What comes with it and what will be coming to Bramall Lane is a bit of a circus. We get that, but it's all a positive, I think, for certainly for Wrexham, um, for the FA Cup, and and for football in general, and certainly for the Wrexham fans. And take the circus away. I imagine how Wrexham played and how close they came to knocking you out of the competition will be motivation enough for your players to not let that happen this time. Yeah, let's say we. Again, it's probably people doing Wrexham a disservice that they're surprised by that. We've got players who've earned the right to be in League One, and you know, and the attraction of Wrexham has, has took them down there. So we're under no illusions how tough it is and what good players have got, and, and we'll prove right in the first game. And how big a role the Sheffield United supporters will have? Nearly 5,000, I believe, will be travelling from Wrexham. Yeah, so it's going to be the atmosphere is going to be good. Obviously, we we want to sell as many as we can and get as many Blades fans in there. Um, and then the challenge for uh, for us is to be noisier than them because it's certainly going to be a great day out for the Wrexham fans. We know why they're turning up. They want that upset again, like they got at Coventry. The atmosphere they brought to Coventry was really, really good. We want our fans to drown them out. And just finally from me, <coughs> in terms of cup runs and the benefits they can bring, you know, something that I covered with your, your time mm. at, at Barnsley, different competitions admittedly, but you went and won a trophy that season and then got promoted too. You know, how much can this influence, impact, help what you're doing in the league if you can get through, you know, with Spurs as well awaiting in the next round? Yeah, I think even back then though, so we know they can go on in hand, definitely, but I'm treating it two separate competitions and 
we know where the priority is, you know, and no argument where the priority is. We know that. We're not hiding away from that, but we still want to win this game, and you see what happens then. But yeah, we. Uh, uh, while picking this team, um, we are thinking ahead, just as we would if it was a league game. So again, I don't want to seem like I'm disrespecting the competition or Rex. I'm not in any way. We're coming into again game Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday against teams at the top, and we know we've. Uh, We've got ourselves in a great position, so it's, that's got to be at the forefront of our minds. Um, but yeah, we picked a team to try and win tomorrow. Um, but certainly, um, I'm treating them as two separate competitions without a doubt. And, and the focus now is solely on Wrexham. As soon as that final whistle goes, it'll switch straight away to uh, to Swansea.